A very good morning once again. For those that are just joining us, we are now taking note of uh, rehabilitation and social reintegration for fistula survivors. I have uh, two uh, guests who will be helping us understand how that is going on in their particular realm. But uh, before we begin, just you ought to know that an estimated 2 million women in Africa are suffering from obstetric fistula caused by obstructed childbirth. However, more numbers linger when incorporation of other kinds of fistula are brought on board. While most interventions have focused on improving clinical outcomes and preventing uh, the disease through community outreach and education, we want to draw attention to the important need for rehabilitation and reintegration services. I'm now joined by Alex Okello, the Executive Director a talents enabling Uganda and Betty Bukira Okello who is also a board member at uh, talents enabling Uganda this should be work that is uh, geared towards rehabilitation and reintegration of uh, victims uh, lady and uh, gentlemen many thanks for joining us this morning thank you great fistula the word itself doesn't sound good most of the time when you are dealing with it especially for us in the media we are talking of the adverse condition and uh, how badly it has affected those that are trying to overcome it before we go into the nitty-gritty of rehabilitation and reintegration what is fistula what is its prevalence and what is the state of affairs i don't know whether that should go to mr okello or miss bukira Okay, maybe I can say the prevalence issues mm -hmm. and then she can come in to explain the, the real disease bec uh, condition okay. because she is the medical professional. Mm. Uh, basically, according to UNFPA, mm. uh, the statistics really are correct, what you just said. Mm -hmm. But according to UNFPA, they, we have over 200,000 women in Uganda living with that condition. 200,000 200, women. And then there's a backlog of about to, uh, you know, 2000, you know, they are, they are not yet been repaired, mm -hmm. okay, with that. And so currently we have many development partners that have come in to support the treatment and the rehabilitation of, mm -hmm. you know, of fistula. But I think she can now yeah. explain exactly what it is. Okay. Yes. Over to you, doctor. A fistula is basically an opening mm. between the, 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 uh, birth canal and the, the bladder or the anus and if somebody has that condition you'll find that the susu, the, the urine and the stool will come out through the same the same canal mm. so it usually happens due to several factors and commonly it is because of obstructed labor there are women who will have labor for a long time and it is obstructed and they are in a state where they cannot access medical care and another factor that usually leads to this condition is early early pregnancy girls who usually conceive when they are still young their muscles and bones are still developing so at the time of labor they cannot contain their muscles cannot contain the pressure so it ends up tearing and open and open and end up leading to an opening between the birth canal and the bladder or the anus mm. sometimes both sometimes one of them and also another factor that can lead to this is poverty some people are really in a state where they cannot even afford to go for medical care while pregnant or even during delivery so they stay in their homes they stay hidden somewhere and the end of, and the end of it all during labor they end up getting this complication and some people believe that they have they have those cultures where they believe that uh, it's best to give birth from home it's best to give birth mm. with the traditional birth attendant mm. and they ignore the medical care even when they could have accessed it. So those are some of the, commons, the common causes of this complication which usually happens to women. All right, let me keep with the medical uh, perspective, especially mm. when it comes to how to cope with the fistula, both on the part of the victims but also on the part of health service providers. Mm. The victims. We've just been talking about another condition that uh, completely affects people in terms of cost. Mm -hmm. When somebody realizes that they have fistula, the condition, how do they begin the process of taking care, especially where poverty is rampant? Because mm -hmm. it could determine 
how best or quickly they reach a health center or medical services? Well, for somebody to get the fistula, mm. it's basically during labor. Mm -hmm. So, which could have been because of poverty, as you have said, where they were, they had no money to access antenatal or even mm -hmm. medical services while giving birth. So then they ended up getting the fistula. Now, when a lady or a young girl realizes that she has the fistula, that opening, the best thing would be to still go to a medical a medical center. Mm -hmm. There are many opportunities in Uganda these days. There are many NGOs and even government hospitals. They're offering this service free mm -hmm. of charge to repair the fistula. Free but of charge? Uh, yeah. Yes, free of charge. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know, many times because it is stigmatizing, mm -hmm. if somebody has it, they're always smelling, oh, they're always getting yeah. recurrent infections. Most so true. many of them you'll find that they remain in their cocoon, they remain in the hiding mm. and they fear to go out and reach to the medical center or to the hospital to get help. So the best would be if you realize you're in this state, mm. go to a hospital. But also there are many NGOs that mm. have come up and they offer the same service. They, in all regional hospitals, the yeah. fistula can be repaired. Mm -hmm. The only hindrance is because because of the stigma, people fear to come out okay. and get medical help. All right, let me now draw attention to aspects of rehabilitation and reintegration. When you talk about stigma, yeah. uh, many people might be afraid, like she yeah. conveniently says, uh, to be able to seek help because yeah. of the nature of yeah. the, how the disease manifests. The uncomfortable stage yeah. is uh, pretty much, and it's understandable mm. for the ladies, no doubt, how is the uh, structuring of uh, rehabilitation uh, processes okay. uh, first and foremost to ensure that they are free enough mm. to talk about it mm. and also come out to access this particular service? That should also help us understand what Talent Enabling Uganda specifically does. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fine. Thank you so much. So there is a very good process right now placed in, uh, in play. Yeah. for people to get these rehabilitation services. Number one is screening. Mm. Is that um, uh, s uh, so many organizations and so many hospitals are doing screening services. Mm. And so they call up these women from wherever they are and they are screened. There are health camps that are having just so that to help these other people come out. Mm. And so that's number one. Number two is treatment. Mm. So they're providing treatment like we said they are um, hospitals now like we have Terre Wode Hospital in Soroti mm. it's a first class hospital that has been built by um, uh, also in support of UNFPA and other stakeholders mm. to really really support uh, uh, you know the, that hospital treats them for free and picks them from wherever they are in Uganda and takes them and treats them. So the treatment is also like helping them to come out. Mm. And then number three is psychosocial support uh, for different. And that's maybe where we come in also. Mm. That after they have been treated, mm. Talents Enabling also comes in to support them with the psychosocial support, mm. counseling them, giving them self-esteem. And so we have been uh, currently running a project supported by Minister of Foreign Affairs of Netherlands mm. and, and have voice and a voice is a, 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 an initiative of MOFA yeah. and so so in that project we are supporting those ones who have already been rehabilitated and so we are training them giving them psychosocial support giving them self and then the other one is empowerment mm. so we are giving them livelihood skills mm. so that it reduces their um, stigma mm. they are able to pay they are able to come out get laundry they are able to get you know because when they get that condition they get so affected and they move behind mm. you know they get lost so we are trying to say under this project how can we give them a voice how can they come out to be and so that's another process for rehabilitation and then the other one really has been community development and community awareness mm. for such cultural af aspects people think it's witchcraft <laughs> when 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 <laughs> when they get <laughs> when somebody gets yeah, a fistula they think it's witchcraft mm -hmm. and so we say no it's not mm -hmm. so there's a lot of massive awareness there's also training for medics mm -hmm. uh one of the girls we are working with told us um their condition wasn't because some of the medics did not understand this and said it will heal 
but the condition worsened. So there are some of them also that need training. So there's a lot of training also right. happening for them. And also issues to do with legal issues. Uh, nationally, there's awareness for that. So duty bearers are coming up to take on the issues of early marriages because it's one of the great causes of fist oh. last time. Yeah. Early marriages and uh, yes. Mm. Ah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Everything keeps, uh, you know, uh, running into the other and all <laughs> factors get compounded yes. and the situation becomes a mm. bit unbearable. You spoke about a hospital that yeah. is offering service yes. and apparently picks uh, victims from any mm. part of the country. Yes. Uh, for purposes of those that are listening right now and watching, mm. could you the name of the hospital? The name of the hospital is Terra It's an, uh, Terra. an organization called the Terra Warde that has built... Terra Warde. Uh, yes, Terra Warde Women Community Terra Hospital. Women hospital. Community Hospital. Yes. Based in Soroti. Based in Soroti. In Soroti. Yes. Okay. Uh, that deals specifically with women who yes. are grappling with fistula. Yes. Okay. I needed to hammer that down because it's, pre it's important. Yeah. There are people who may be suffering mm -hmm. and simply don't know. Yeah. And don't have this information that is Yeah. So if there. they are there, mm. uh, please there is this service on. Okay. And of course, Terode and many other development you know, partners are mm. doing this. So the reason why we know them, we've partnered with them in several aspects mm. to do this kind of work for the women and rehabilitating them. So wherever you are in mm. parts of Uganda, you will be picked okay. and then you will be treated for two weeks mm. if you're there and then the person and the caretaker. All right. Yep. And then uh, what exactly is the talent enabling Uganda? For you, you are a rehabilitation so organization. So for us, basically, we are a learning and business development organization that supports vulnerable groups. Mm. And so we empower vulnerable youth and women mm. to have a skill in their life and help them come up with a business. So we got a project, again, I, as I mentioned it, to get with Voice. Mm. And Voice is an initiative of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Netherlands. Okay, and so okay. they are really uh, exist to empower vulnerable people mm. and one of the vulnerable people that we have in our communities is those people who got fistula right. and totally because they get so stigmatized and get lost mm. and so together with voice we are saying and now that they have uh, treated them mm. and they have given them a chance to be but you know um, this fistula really affects you psychologically mm. in a way that even after treatment mm. you you remain like, like uh, for lack of better word, undercover. <laughs> undercover. You totally don't want to come out. So many of the girls that we are working with, that's the first thing we deal with, psychosocial support, giving mm -hmm. them a voice. Actually, we have a program where we are going to bring them even to pitch their businesses. You know, uh, 17th November this, this month, we're going to invite them and uh, we have been training them on business. Mm. One of it is just basically to make them come out. That's right. To make them you know, stand up. To make them know that he, if he still was just stigma. a condition, mm. it was just a condition. But your life moves on. Your life, moves your on. life is much better. And, and many of them really, we have got so excited. Yeah. Uh, one of the the important testimonies we can give is that um, after we trained them, three of them gathered up and said we need to promote this, and they have started a school outreach to tell other girls wow. and to help them know that you know don't get pregnant early. Mm. You still have a big life. You have that, and so, and so okay. that's, that's what's happening. Let me return to the medical perspective. Uh, Madame Bukira, one of the aspects that help people in dealing with stigma is what they become after they recover. Yeah, many of the signs that somebody suffered fistula, do they stay with you? Uh, that they are a constant <laughs> reminder of this? I do not. <laughs> Because the stigma, <laughs> if he says that uh -huh. many remain undercover, mm -hmm. it means away from the fact that they were known to suffer fistula, mm -hmm. they themselves could be grappling with something that keeps on being a, con a reminder of this. Tell us, <laughs> what is the time that it takes for somebody to fully recover mm -hmm. from fistula? And when they do, the chances of again suffering the disease, are they eliminated or there could be a possibility? Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, there are no signs that somebody will look at and know oh. this woman must have had a <laughs> fistula. But uh, the person will remain behind simply because That's a they, they, yeah, they, they know, they think everyone knows they were smelling mm. earlier. They think everyone will know that uh, they, 
the, this is the girl who used to pass around and she was smelling poo, she was smelling oh, urine, you know. Yeah. Even after recovery, they will struggle to associate again with the community. If they see you overlooking at them, they may think, ah, she must be thinking of the other condition. Mm. But like, uh, someone will go for an operation, there is a scar that will remain, mm. but not this scar that is seen by everyone, that, yes. That. So un uh, unless if you have gone into another act, that's when somebody may say, okay, there is this casca, but still not this big that it's too evident. Mm -hmm. And the recovery process takes one to two weeks, basically, mm -hmm. for somebody to get back on the road and they can walk and do work. Mm -hmm. But still not doing a lot of work Just because the muscles are still healing. The entire healing process takes about six to nine weeks, depending okay. on somebody's body. If they take the medication and the medical advisors, they should be. All right, I'm afraid we are out of time. Betty Bukira Hokelo, the Managing Director at St. Eliza Healthcare and also Board Member of Talent Emerging, uh, Enabling rather Uganda. Many thanks for joining us and uh, many yeah. thanks to you too. Alex Hokelo, the Executive Director at Talent Enabling Uganda. Your information shared has emboldened our understanding of the condition of fistula, but most importantly, offered us a lifeline. Mm -hmm. That stigma can be beaten and that people can go on with their lives very comfortably and productively. Now